Hi again, this is Dan Freel with the Mortgage Update. Today's video, we're going to talk about the FHA 203K loan. This is a program that's starting to really sweep over a lot of areas uh, because it allows you to buy a home that needs repairs or needs fixed up. It's that fix me upper, um, in other words, that you're looking at where you can get the, the a distressed property in the neighborhood at a rock bottom price, put the rehab money into it and still have a ton of equity in the home. That's the basis of this loan. So um, this is gaining in popularity every month uh, that we have this program, we see that this this business or this section of our business grow and grow and grow. So let's get to it. Here's an FHA 203k loan. Basically, here's the parameters of it. You're looking at a house that that really is um, mainly. I'll, I'll say it needs some TLC. Um, it could it can have some structural things that need fixed or repaired, and we'll go that through that in a second. But there's two variations of a 203k. There's a full and a streamlined. The full is very hard to get, and we are not doing that program at this time. What we are doing is the 203K stream loan line uh, program. So here's here's pretty much what it entails. Um, you know, we'll go through the guidelines, and then what contractor bids, what's a good bid, what's what's a bad bid, and we get this is the area right here that we see the biggest. I want to say issues on loans, and this is very time-consuming process if it's not done right. Uh, the process flow, what, what happens, what's the time frame of each section, uh, a summary and additional resources that we can give you to kind of help explain some of these things. Advantage of a 203k loan, basically again the ability to buy a bigger home um, than you otherwise could afford and it, it needs some TLC. So, you know, here's some of the basic parameters of a 203k loan. Again, think of it as that house that's in repairs that you know, a lot of people don't want to mess with. You can go in, sweep it up, uh, get it, buy it with this loan, get money with this loan to fix out the fix up the home. It's one loan and different distributions of cash to contractors to get the work done. Guidelines. Okay, the biggest thing in this is the property must be your primary home. Okay. So you can do this as a purchase or a refinance. One cool thing about this is you get a bunch of benefits if you buy energy efficient um, items. You can couple this with programs like the Good Neighbor Next Door and HUD, the, some HUD programs and I'll have videos in regards to what are these loans in the future and that's what I'm, I've been working on recently is doing an educational series to kind of explain a lot of these things. Um, the house must be structured, uh, been you know, in, completed for a year. It can be a an attached or detached single family or PUD, or it can be an FHA approved condominium. Two to four units are allowed. Um, again, here's the word I, I'll emphasize: is this isn't an investor loan. It you, you, this needs to be your primary home, is or it's going to be your primary home. Um, you have to con start the construction within 30 days, be done within six months. There is, again, here this six months for full, um, eliminate that for now. Um, so kind of we'll keep with this process. You don't, the property does not have to have running water. So let's say you're a realtor out there or you're, you're a consumer and you went to buy a property and it didn't have, the plumbing wasn't working, the water was shut off and it needed electrical repairs and the roof was leaking. What are you going to do? You know, it, but you really like the house. You like everything about the house except it needs some TLC. This is your program. You can get up to $35,000 in renovations. And that's the cap on this. So there's no minimum, but you can you get up to thirty-five thousand uh, to do all the repairs that you're looking to do. Cost, um, it, it's they're fairly the same as any FHA loan. Again, this is an FHA loan. Here's what happens though: you you'll have a con, uh, a reserve set a set aside in case you hit some areas that you know, we're unforeseen, so you're not all of a sudden something happened, it's like, oh, okay, we're five thousand dollars over budget. Now what? And so there'll be a little reserve put aside. Um you can allow for construction fees and costs, inspections. So you'll have the these will the they're the fees that you're gonna have. 
Um, and again, basically, it's almost the same as a, just a normal loan. But you'll have a reinspection fee, a title update. You know, again, you're, you're going to have permits, obviously, if you're, you're doing some things to the property that requires permits and so forth. So it's, it's fairly similar to a, a normal FHA loan. Eligible improvements, kitchens and bath, purchase and install appliances. A lot of people don't understand this part of it. I, ha I closed uh, uh, one of these, a 203K loan recently, and the realtors was arguing at, with us at the closing that you cannot finance appliances in this. And I showed her the check and I showed her the bids. The appliances are in there. Repair, um, the replacement of the roof, gutters, downspouts, repair. I won't go through all this. You can read it yourselves. Um, but again, one of the biggest things is it cannot be structural. You cannot put on an addition. Um, if the if the house has fallen in, we'll have a structural engineer, and you can you can fix that part of it. But you, this isn't this is intended to um, kind of TLC a home that you're looking at, but not put additions onto it. Um, ineligible improvements, and here's a list of them. One of the biggest things is landscaping. A lot of people think they can do landscaping. Um, you can't do that. Repair to de uh, detached structures, um, you know, barns and things like that. Uh, there's limitations on if you have a pool. So those are the things that uh, are ineligible to repair. Self-help. Self-help is not allowed. Even if you're a, if you're a contractor, you cannot do it uh, yourself. They don't want that person involved in there. Um, however, look at this line here, interior, exterior painting. Borrower can provide the labor, but we'll have to specify out the cost of materials. <clears throat> oh, here's the section right here, and I forgot about that. Um, you can, if you're a contractor, you can do the work, but all that's getting uh, paid for are the materials. So I take that back. You can do the work, we can't, we, but we, can, we can't pay you for it. It's only to buy the materials. Self-help for full, we won't discuss that. Energy efficient options. Here's read through this, because you can buy energy efficient items that are a benefit to the loan and it can, you can get additional monies if you do purchase energy efficient um, items. So you can pause on this if you'd like or go back to it. Uh, all this stuff, all this data will be on my website as well. There's that. Uh, more energy efficient items. Contractors and bids. Here's the biggest area that, that, that's of concern. Here's what we need. The license, the bond, the insurance. We need the real the contractor to do a W nine. We need a resume with um, with with the work experiences. We need references. What we don't want you to do is get into this and have a contractor that's just kind of taking you taking advantage of you and just kind of drops the ball. And because uh, it the, there's monies being held in reserve to fund this thing, and um, so you know we want we want a reputable contractor involved as well as you will. Uh, license requirements, it'll show you the license requirements that's needed. You need it basically for electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. Um, contractor bids, Would it, and I'll, I'll bring this, break this down in a nutshell. It needs to be itemized. You need to give us what you're doing, like for example, you're putting in an air conditioner. We need to know the make and model of the air conditioner, what that the cost of the air conditioner is, and what the labor cost is. So this is, if you read through here, read it in detail, because this is exactly what we need in regards to the contractor bid. Sample of a complete bid, here it is. And I'll pause here for a second. That's a bad bid. Here's a good bid. You see how everything is broken down. Materials, exactly what you're doing. A new roof, exactly what you're doing. The material cost, labor cost. That's a good bid. This isn't. We don't know what you're doing. Wrap, wrap opening with trim. Okay, so that's this is the biggest holdup on a lot of the 203K loans that we do. 
process flow, it's pretty simple. Borrow finds a house, review the contract. Uh, this is only on a full, so disregard this and this. We'll get you a case number. Um, homeowners and contractor agreement, we'll get that signed. Good faith estimate, disclosures to you, order the appraisal, underwrite, close, renovation begins, final inspection, money's distributed. Timeline. Closing is typically 40 to 60 days after the appraisal is ordered. Cannot be, we cannot do this um, prior to, this is basically on a full-fledged, um, a full, to a 3K full, we do the streamline. So basically what we need from you on, on submission is a, a good bid when we, we send in the loan for approval. Once it's approved, then the appraisal is ordered. Uh, the work must begin within 30 days, and it must be completed within six months. Here's some helpful links for you if you need any additional information. And that is it. There's my information. If I could be of help and you find that house out there that you fall in love with but can't buy it because it needs some work, please let us know. Um, you can reach me at 630-338-1160, email me at dan.frio at gmail.com, or visit us on the web. You can find all this information there, themortgageupdate.net. Take care.